The current pandemic can leave us feeling swamped by a sense of anxiety and frustration. Cultural studies, however, asks us to step back from our immediate instinctive responses and to ask questions which can help us increase our understanding. My name is Chris Schilling and I'm a professor of sociology and lecturer on the cultural studies degree. Over the next few minutes, I hope to provide you with the briefest taste of the type of perspectives that cultural studies adopts when analysing social issues by taking a look at coronavirus. Current news, whether it be from the television, radio or social media, tends to focus on facts and figures and the policies surrounding the pandemic. Now, this approach can be very valuable when it comes to tracking infection rates and death rates. It can help us assess policies and also it can enable us to explore what are essentially forms of theory in action. It can see which of those are working. It can help us to see which of those are underpinned by fatal mistakes. Cultural studies also encourages us to take a broader approach to put on a different pair of spectacles in order to see the world around us in a slightly different, more critical way. In particular, it asks us to think about how the virus affects the diverse ways of life that exist on this globe and how in turn its management is affected by those ways of being. We only have to look at the cases of America and China, for instance, to see that the answers to these questions can be radically different. It's perhaps useful here to turn to Turner's theory of social character, which allows us to contrast the frontier spirit of America with the traditions of Confucianism and Taoism that are to be found in China. The issue here is the extent to which very different approaches towards lockdown might be forged by the different phenomena that affect the development of social character in these countries. More broadly, Cultural studies and also sociology, the discipline to which it is closely aligned, would encourage us to ask a series of questions about history, power, inequalities, politics, social forms and the potential for social and cultural change. I've listed just a few of these down on this PowerPoint, but I think it's interesting to ask in particular, for instance, whether the suspension of current norms prompted by coronavirus might have actually helped cultivate a climate of change in which protests, including those associated with Black Lives Matter, might have more long-term impact. My own specialist interest in these issues involves cultural studies and embodiment, I teach a stage two one year long course on cultures of embodiment and it's useful here to turn to a lecture given by the anthropologist Marcel Morse in 1934 on techniques of the body. In this talk Morse argued that every nation, every society has its own distinctive ways of managing the body which encourage people to acquire different ways of knowing about and sensing the world around them. Morse's lecture suggests that our upbringing, the forms of information and contact to which we are subjected, affect how we sense the world, how we act in the world, and crucially, therefore, how we come to gain knowledge about that world. Let's look briefly at three other authors whose writing can help us get a handle on how COVID-19 has impacted on our techniques of the body, because it certainly has. How we manage the body, how we sense our world has shifted as a result of this pandemic, and some of those shifts might be with us for a long time to come. Irving Goffman is best known for his writings on the interaction order, a term he uses to denote those informal rules governing intercorporeal encounters that we have with other people. They include things like turn-taking, like respecting other people's uh, personal space. I think if Goffman were alive today, he'd be astutely aware of the fundamental changes that have taken place in the interaction order. And these changes include a shift from fairly close co-presence with other people to physical distancing from other people. They involve changes in the amount to which we would trust the presence of somebody else to the extent we would be suspicious or cautious of another person's presence. They would also, it seems to me, include thoughts about the way in which motorised bodies no longer, at least temporarily, have the same degree of dominance on roads as do other forms of, of motility. 
And finally, Goffman would be extremely interested how in how it is that um, certain body techniques that used to be considered private matters have now become public and political issues. Just think how hand washing has gone from being something that people did in the privacy of their own bathroom to something which is now considered a matter of the utmost public significance. An action which far from just affecting an individual's cleanliness can actually be fatal if not undertaken correctly. Moving away from Goffman, let's have a look briefly at the writings of the French social theorist Michel Foucault. Foucault was particularly interested in, in discipline and in punishment, and his writings would enable us to explore and interrogate how it is in the current situation that states from across the globe have developed forms of biopolitics, that is, the political management of bodies. And that's evident in examples ranging from the track and trace apps that people are encouraged to use in order to map the spread and help reduce the incidence of coronavirus. It's also evident in the proliferation of thermal cameras, which purport to be able to differentiate between pure bodies, i.e. those without the virus and those considered polluted that need removing from normal social circulation. But it's not all to do with power and discipline. Cultural studies is also intensely interested in issues of agency, the capacity of individuals and of groups of people when they come together to make a difference to the world around them. And here I want to turn to the French writer Emile Durkheim. The notion of the sacred is the most important concept in Durkheim's work. The sacred is a social fact, that which is regarded as exceptional to people that helps forge people into communities through, a, through stimulating a sense of fellow feeling or collective in, effervescence. And maybe here it's just possible that those Thursday evening rounds of applause that are given to essential key workers in general and the NHS in particular might be people coming together to create a new secular form of the sacred. Something we value that goes above and beyond the cash nexus in our lives. There's never been a better time in recent history to develop your cultural understanding. Take care. <laughs>